Here I want to tell you some clinical points. Number one. Okay, clinical points. Number one, aminoglycoside. Aminoglycoside work on the 30S subunit. Right? Aminoglycoside work on 30S subunit. Aminoglycoside specially interfere with initiation process. Aminoglycosides like streptomycin, tobramycin, gentacin, gentamicin, yes, canamycin, micacin, all these drugs which belong to aminoglycoside, they bind basically in the susceptible bacteria, they reach to their ribosomes, bind with the 30S subunit and if a aminoglycoside are bound over here, for example, here aminoglycoside bind, they will disturb initiation factor number 3. They may bind here and disturb the interaction of Shaindalgarno, anti Shaindalgarno sequence. Proper or binding and orientation will not be done on, on messenger RNA on the 30th subunit. Start codon may not be oriented well. And then initiation process will be disrupted. Initiation process will be disrupted. And even if to some extent it completes, but because start codone is disturbed, it is not positioned, messenger RNA is not properly positioned in the presence of aminoglycoside, then reading frame will be disturbed. So nucleotide sequences and codone, anti-codone whole system is disturbed, which I will discuss in detail in a lecture called mechanism of action of streptomycin or mechanism of action of aminoglycoside. For a while you just trust me that aminoglycoside work on where? 30th subunit. They mainly disrupt the initiation, right? And once initiation process is disturbed due to multiple molecules of aminoglycosides are bound with 30th subunit. So messenger RNA cannot orient itself properly on the 30th subunit. So Either initiation process does not start and does not reach to elongation site, so peptide chains are not formed, or if they are formed because messenger or, or uh, RNA is not properly oriented, so transfer RNA with wrong, you say anticodone and codone matching will be there, right? And that will lead to misreading of messenger RNA in the presence of aminoglycoside and production of abnormal proteins and bacterial proteins are either reduced in production and whatever is produced mostly they are abnormal and junky proteins and that disturb the protein synthesis of bacteria. Now this is how streptomycin works. Streptomycin is very old antibiotic. It was discovered in very old time in 1950s and it was the first uh, to be used uh, in tuberculosis. Now it is mainly used not only in tuberculosis with other combinations but streptomycin or aminoglycosides are also used for gram negative aerobic bacteria or some gram positive bacteria but it is not used for anaerobic bacteria because later in some lecture I will explain that basically streptomycin or aminoglycoside cannot be taken up by the bacteria which do not have aerobic system, right? And that is why anaerobic bacteria cannot take the aminoglycoside inside. So aminoglycosides fail on anaerobic bacteria, right? This is one thing. So basically streptomycin work on the 30th subunit. Many actions of streptomycin, but one of the most important action is disrupting the initiation step and initiation complex formation, disturbing the initiation of formation of the peptide chain or disturbing the messenger RNA orientation so much that proper reading frame is not available and misreading occurs and that leads to misreading of messenger RNA occurs and uh, wrongly placed amino acids lead to abnormal protein synthesis. Remember one of the most important function of the 30th subunit is not only binding the messenger RNA but also reading and proofreading the messenger RNA. So 30th subunit is basically a reader. 
right now what I, what i was saying that other drug i will mention linazolid linazolid is not a natural drug like streptomycin streptomycin was basically discovered from a natural source from streptomyces griseus but linazolid is relatively recently introduced drug linazolid is basically totally designed and synthesized in the laboratory there is no natural source for linazolid and with your both ear listen linazolid is very very important important antibiotic and use it very sparingly because it was designed and synthesized and thankfully it is a successful antibiotic molecule against multi drug resistant gram positive bacteria for example linazolid is very successful in many strains of methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus mrsa and it is also very effective in many of the staphylococci which are or streptococci which are vancomycin resistant because linazolid was originally designed and synthesized keeping in mind that we need new antibiotics against the multi drug resistant gram positive bacteria it is successful antibiotic wow it is successful antibiotic but use it very sparingly only when other drug are not going to work the reason being now we are developing resistance against it and we don't want to lose such a useful drug right and so streptomycin or amino glycoside work on 30s sub unit at initiation state linazolid work on 50s sub unit and you know what does linazolid do to 50s sub unit this is 50s sub unit if it is exposed to linazolid right what linazolid will do linazolid molecules are bound over here and if they are bound like this do you think 50s s unit can bind with 30s no so linazolid bind with the 50s unit in such a fashion that 50s sub unit cannot bind with 30s unit and functional 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 initiation complex cannot be made and protein synthesis fail or we can say 70s initiation complex cannot be made so we can say if you compare mechanism of action of 30s sub unit sorry streptomycin or amino glycoside with the linazolid right this fails the initiation process at 30s sub unit it means it fails the pre initiation complex and it fails at 50s sub unit and does not allow the 50s to bind with 30s pre initiation complex this is mainly for yes amino glycosides they are mainly synthetic mostly especially streptomycin and other now some are modified synthetically but most of them are naturally derived and linazolid is completely designed and and synthesized in laboratory in vitro amino glycoside very old antibiotic this is a new antibiotic this is amino glycoside yes they are used for gram negative aerobic bacteria especially negative gram negative aerobes few gram positive and totally fail on anaerobic linazolid is specially useful for gram positive multi drug resistant bacteria main side effects of main side effects of amino glycosides are autotoxicity nephrotoxicity neuromuscular junction blockage amino glycoside a mean guy which hits on your ear kicks on your kidney and leaves you paralyzed these are the major side effects of amino glycoside linazolid has two major side effect right one of them is polyneuropathy and number two you are going to tell me who is going to tell me linazolid 